artists. A great example of this is Jackson Pollock's painting. He's the famous artist from the 20th century. And his artwork is very well known because of its fractal quality. But if you look at his early paintings, when he was still developing as an artist, those early paintings, when they're analyzed for their fractal dimension, have a, a lower fractal dimension of like 1.1 to 1.2. But as Jackson Pollock developed his technique and really explored the fractal nature of his art, his later paintings have fractal dimensions much closer to 2, like a 1.8 or a 1.7. And you can see as he developed as an artist, he really developed his eye for creating fractals. And, you know, fractals have been around for always. We just didn't know what to call them. But we've always seen fractals in nature. Things that have that self-similarity, that show repeating patterns, that have that sort of infinite complexity, and demonstrate a fractal dimension. And if you look at something like trees, not only are the branches themselves very fractal in nature, you look at little bits of branches and they look like little tiny trees. But also, there's a mirroring effect with trees, where the structure of the tree above ground mirrors the root structure that is below the ground. You also see fractals in things like pine cones, snowflakes, the uh, coke snowflakes, a very familiar fractal. You see it in plants. Anytime you see a plant that has a spiraling leaf pattern, a spiral phyllotoxy, that is a fractal. You see it in copper crystals and in rivers. You see it in the veins of leaves. And you even see it in foam bubbles. 